example. So somebody asked today in the group, uh, you know, they want to make something specific length because, say, before they start, they want to have, uh, a, say, a half second of room tone before, a couple seconds in between, after you say, yeah, chapter one. And then at the very end, they want to put in three seconds, whatever. So they have some room tone. They want to put it to an exact length. So a couple different things you can do on that. Number one, let me select some room tone here, and I'll just copy that. I normally do just a drag copy because I'm too lazy. Let me just put in, I'll even create a, a brand new track here, blue track. This is going to be room tone. Room tone, exact length. We'll just call it that there. And then I'll make that bigger. So there's what we're going to work with. So we'll take some audio. You could copy it and paste it down there. I'm too lazy to do that. I drag, add alt or option, and that'll make a copy. It's also known as a drag copy or a copy drag. So I grab, grabbed it by the lower half, dragged it down. We have that there. I will almost always put that at the very uh, start. And I zoom in to an extreme level to make sure there isn't anything in that audio that is going to be problematic. A lot of times, as a matter of fact, I won't do any of this stuff till after it's gone through RX, to be honest with you. I will be working with a piece of audio. But any piece of audio, you could zoom in. Normally, the, if you're going to do room tone, it's going to be after RX rather than before in the 80% case, more, maybe more than that. So I have a little tiny fragment there. So if you're trying to get to exact length, first thing you want to do is go ahead and you can zoom in here. You can see that's about 0.1 seconds. <laughs> that's not a lot. So press the D key. It duplicates it a whole bunch of times. Shift double click and I'll D it a couple times. So if I'm going to do room tone and I know I'm going to need five seconds or five minutes, I'll, I'll I'll do something longer than what I need in order to have something now, and then we'll shorten it up. So we're just going to take that, and we're going to use our macro toolbar and bounce it. If you don't have the macro toolbar, then shift, double click, and uh, control B or uh, control B or command B, depending on your platform. But I'm too lazy. I'm just going to bounce it here like that. So now I have a segment that is about five seconds long, and it's about five seconds long. It's not exactly. I guess if I had been, so I'm gonna now shorten this, and if I wanna hit something that's gonna be four seconds, so one, a couple things. Number one, you can do a lot of this stuff visually. You don't need it to be that exact. Now, sometimes if I really wanna be, you know, if I wanna make the visuals easier, temporarily I'm gonna drag this up here so that's sitting right next to the timeline. And that's gonna tell me if I wanted to make something at four seconds, then there's a couple of little baby steps. Number one, that's probably good enough for room tone. That is not super close. Uh, I mean, it is not that bad. It's off a of thousands of a second there. So it's not that big of a deal overall. But if I wanted to get it exactly, there it is. There's exactly to the four. The easy way to do that is to turn on snap. Be sure you have snap to grid turned on. You can see snap to grid is on, checked. And as long as that's on, now the endpoints are gonna snap to the little ticks that are up above so I can get it exactly to anything I want. Now I have to admit, no one really cares if I'm shooting for four seconds of room tone and I got 3.9 or 4.067 something, doesn't really matter. And at the beginning, by the way, so now I could put this back where I want it. Usually I'll have that track down below. But so if I turn on snap, I can get hyper precise. That's perfectly precise. That's right at the four second mark and it's exactly four seconds. And then if I want to have multiple segments, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take these things and duplicate them. So once again, drag, add the alter option key and I have a second one. And really what I'll almost always do is if I've snap turned on, I started that at the five second mark. So now if I want this one to be a half second, then if snap is turned on, I just accidentally got lucky and I wasn't zoomed in enough, And but I still hit the mark of, five, of there's a half second. I should tell you, uh, at the very beginning, I never put a half second. I always put uh, 0.6 seconds, knowing that since you, can, you have some wiggle room there between half second and one second that you need for an audio book, I like 0.6 seconds. And then knowing that that's gonna give me just a little bit more. And I would like a little bit more on that. A little bit more never hurts. Uh, you don't need to be hyper precise. In fact, I don't want. To, I've had this case before where people are so close. They they take this 
segment here and they start it and they get it down to a half second perfectly. And then what happens is they don't realize that before this segment starts, if we zoom in, there's always a little bit before. So depending on which bozo I get at ACX, if they're an intern and they're new, I've had people have something uh, sent back because they were so close that somebody was unhappy with it. So make it 0.6 if you're doing that and then label it. This is going to be 0.6 RT or I'll usually do it the other way around. RT 0.6. And I also like to colorize them so that at a glance, I know that the, that this is my room tone and this one is four seconds. If I wanted that at the end, I'm going to adjust this down to three and a half seconds. And then I'm going to colorize it so that I know that that's going to be, and you can use any colors you want. I do have, I do have some dumb things that I use if I'm doing like, uh, let me, let me just do it. Hold on a second. I'm going to take this here and I'm going to move this beyond this one. So now, oh, because I have Ripple Edit turned on, it won't let me do that. There, there's the first segment, small, medium, and large is the order that I put them in. And there's the big, and what I like to do, this is kind of silly. Um, sun rises in the morning, sets at night. This is not news to most of you. Uh, but because it does that, I end up having my beginning segments are six seconds. And then this one at the end, I'm going to have a uh, room tone and for me, it's going to be 3.5 at the end and that's, and then I'm going to adjust that and make sure it's 3.5. And then visually, if you start them on the second mark, you can count one, two, three and a half. Okay. <laughs> so it, as long as you start on a second, if you have this turned on, then you can adjust the end exactly and have it snap to a certain length. That makes it easy. So now, Usually, let's pretend that this was a breath. Pretend that when I recorded this, I was doing a, a, a raw recording here, and I didn't wait at all. So usually there would be a little bit of space here, but we take this, and we copy this, and we can go, I'm going to turn off. Now I don't like snap turned on for this, so I'm going to take it right here, and I'm going to do a replace, and there are sunrises in the morning, and I'm going to take this one, and copy it. I normally would do all this with keystrokes. I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to pretend that I had a little tiny space at the end and I don't have to be that precise. Replace that. And now what happens is at a glance, you can see that at the beginning and the end, and I'm hyper zoomed in here with the visuals, that I have 0.6 at the front, 3.5 at the end. If you want, you can make this an orange color or something to make it stand out even more. You can do this, do whatever you want with the colors. But if you make them colored, then what happens is you will quickly see that you copied and that you did a replace. And now you can see at a glance, no matter how zoomed you are, that it is a, a specific, that you've already done the replacement. You can see it at a glance. So I do use colors. I do have them labeled. Uh, snap is the way to do it. But even without snap, if snap is turned off, as long as you zoom in enough, then it is pretty easy to get this because it really doesn't need to be a hyper exact amount. If I needed two and a half and I started at one, then obviously I'm going to go to about three and a half and I'll drag that over and just drop it in there. And that's probably just absolutely good enough if I wanted two and a half seconds. Change the label, done. Also note, this room tone you use, before you do any of this stuff, you really should be exporting a WAV file and putting it in a common folder and then and use that to create these little segments. So that's a whole nother discussion uh, beyond, um, do I put the room plan? Yes, I put it on my template, but if you're going to put it on your template, you do have to take a, some baby steps because see, I copied this from this audio here. This is actually, if you look behind the scenes, then all that audio is sitting in a specific folder. And that specific folder is going to be, in this case, in uh, because I was just hacking around to do this, it's going to be sitting in this folder. Not really a smart way to do it. Okay. Now, because I just opened up a thing and I, I was doing something with somebody and I needed an example and I tested it and I just didn't even name it. I, I violated all my own rules. 
right? Because I can, because I'm a big boy, and I can do dumb things. All right, this is the dumb thing. Now that means that all the bounces are sitting here. There's that room tone you know, that when I bounced it. So now it means it's sitting in this folder. That means someday if I take and put this on my template, then it ends up that the template has audio that is from a specific folder. Well, here's what I'm going to do at some point. This is a brand new machine, so I've been testing all sorts of things. What will happen at some point is I will go in and clean out all these little things. I, I'm, usually I do it even before now. I just get rid of all of them because they're garbage. They're all test things that I was doing because I set up a new machine and I was verifying, is my template in? Is this working? Is the interface working? Am I recording properly? Do I, I, I Testing a bunch of stuff. And since I've done this thousands of times, I just knew, all right, all these are just little tests and I'm going to dump all of them and they're all going to get deleted. Well, here's the problem that's going to come up later. Somebody's going to complain to me, wow, Studio One's so bad because it can't find something. Yeah, because I left it in a spot. It knows where this audio segment is. It knows that that audio segment is sitting behind the scenes in a specific folder. It's sitting in this folder. I delete that folder later. Ah, I can just do it now. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to save this. So watch this. Okay. I just saved that. Now, do I have that folder up? Let me, yo, there it is. Yeah. So I just save this file, close. It's going to be on my clipboard. And then I'm going to go out there. I'm going to delete it. Here's that media folder because, hey, this was garbage. This was my one, or I archive it. I can move it to a new spot. I can even just rename it here and it won't be able to find it. And so what's going to happen is instantly, as soon as I do this, I'll do this the hard way. Rename. Yeah. Trash. And then I go ahead and, uh, oh, because it's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I still have that open. Studio One still knows that's, that's, um, that that's open. Okay. So it's not going to let me change that right now. But I get rid of that. In the, I wonder if I could get rid of it in the media folder. I wonder if I could rename it. Let's see if I can do that here. We'll see. Uh, I want to take this and do a right click and rename. Should be able to double click on that. And let's see if it'll let me do that. No, it won't because it's, uh, oh, because I have it open in RX. I know. Duh. I had opened something in RX here earlier. Oh, I know why. Because I double clicked on it one time. There we go. Okay. It'll let me rename now. Try again. There it is. I just renamed it. Uh, but I'm going to just delete it. Oh, if I delete it, it'll delete everything. So, but I, but I, I rename that folder. So it's not going to be able to find it. So then I go to open it and here's the song again. I'm going to open it. And now it's going to give me this message and people will complain. Oh no, studio one's terrible. Well, no studio one's doing what I told it. This, these, every piece of audio that's sitting here, you see this file not found. That's because it knows where it lives on disk. And if I move it around behind its back or delete it or rename it like I just did, then it can't find it. Now, if I click on this, I could go ahead and locate it. There it is right there. And there it is back again. That's not a studio on issue. That's a me issue. I just, I just behind its back, moved something, renamed it. And I just did put it back. You can see it's easy to put back. But if I put that on a template file, it has to know the location of that. So yes, you can put it on the template, but you have to do it properly, which means you have to understand like I, on every machine, say, hey, this is a brand new machine, so I'm sure I don't even have that folder here. Under my songs folder, since this machine is brand new, you look at all these things. These are just me just testing things because I haven't used this machine in production yet. And when I did, I have, there's one thing I have done on this machine and I, uh, it's all going over to a different folder. It's because I was doing some, uh, training videos and there are some, there's a, there's an audio, there it is right there. I redid the install program, but under, but under here, under songs folder, I create a folder and I have a clever naming thing because I'm so clever called common. What do you think common's for? Common means that I'll put room tone. I will put a track of room tone in there. That's 15 to 30 minutes, a wave file that I've exported specifically for using on other projects. That's been after RX. And then that's hyper clean. And I will take that and I will make all segments based on something that I have in the common folder. Then no matter what song I have in there, um, then yeah, skip the ones that are open. I've got some things open here, but that's okay. Um, I just cleaning out the 
crapola, you know, showing you taking out the laundry here. And, um, and so, okay, I have a bunch of them that are open because I'm doing stuff, but I just cleared a bunch of them. Yeah. Export here to the common to begin with so that every time your template, if you use the audio from here, it totally works. So bottom line is, yes, I put it on the template, but you have to do it properly. I do go over that in the jumpstart at some point. I probably in the advanced jumpstart. I, I probably don't go over that in the, in the regular jumpstart. I can't remember if it's in jumpstart or advanced. I, pre I predict it's in advanced, in advanced cause it's a, it's a more, it, it wigs people out if they're newer, they don't understand where things are stored and I don't go into that. They don't have to know that it's if you're doing things to set things up, that are a little more complicated then it's good to know, create a common folder in your songs then use the audio in there, export a clean, some clean room tone there, drag that in. Then it knows in the background that, that this audio came from common. Life's pretty good. Okay. So hope that helps. It's easy to do. It's not really all that tough, but, uh, there are details and, you know, make yourself some room tone. I like to colorize them. You don't have to. Uh, no, don't get hyper precise with it. It does not have to be a half second. It can be 0. 0.6. That's actually a better thing. If I'm going for 3.5, it's really good if it's darn close, but if you start it at one, yeah, it's easy to go and be similar here. And, and because I started with a segment that was six seconds or five seconds, it was five seconds. Then I can easily take and copy this one. And if I make a copy of it, and I go ahead and paste it, then even though that's starting off at that three and a half seconds, now I can, as long as I move this over here, I'm gonna do it the imprecise way. I'm gonna visually do it here. And of course, it's easier if it's sitting right here. Yeah, there's roughly four seconds, okay? I got lucky, I can, but let's say I wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect there. I wanted to get this to be two seconds, four seconds, that I mean, I'm going to go to the six second mark. Now I have a two second or two and a half seconds. Does it have to be hyper precise? No, that's pretty close right there. And then of course, relabel because now this is a two and a half second. This is 2.5. And then of course, I'll have different colors for all mine. I like having them different color because then when you copy them, if I went into my audio, let's put this back the other way. So if, if this first thing here said chapter one, and I wanted to put two and a half seconds in here, then I could copy that two and a half seconds, do this, feel replace. Now I see half second or 0.6, two and a half. And then at the very end, three and a half. Okay. You can see them all color coded there. And even when it's zoomed in, you can kind of get a feel for, ah, I did that. All right. Makes it easy. <laughs> all right. Anybody, if you have a question, be sure to put it in there. Uh, the only thing that's weird is, yeah, you do need a common folder. Uh, it's about understanding enough about in the background. Audio is not stored in the song file. The song file is a container. It contains, it, it knows, like the song file knows things like this. The song file knows how tall each track is. The song file tracks what color the uh, track is. The song file tracks that you have this button clicked on this track. It knows that this track has effects on it or doesn't and what they are. That's the kind of thing that the song file being a container, it understands all the details related to this particular file. The audio itself is always stored in another location, but it keeps it organized. Whatever I name this, that's why I tell people. Name your things up front because otherwise you get this silly thing of today's date, my name. That's worthless. Okay. Don't do this in the real world. I'm hacking and I've done thousands of these. So, hey, I also have driven over the speed limit, you know, sorry. Um, and most of you have too. So don't give me grief on that. But anyway, point being, we know the rules. So if I go ahead and speed, I know I'm going to get pulled over eventually, right? I probably might, I might not today. I'll get away with it today. I might get away with it for two years. Okay. Or, or two days. Uh, so if you're going to speed, yeah, just, I take responsibility for my speeding. <laughs> All right. Uh, and you should too. Anyway, Alan, oh, I happened to change this color here to the same color I picked for the other thing. So I didn't see that that segment was a color. All right. I hope that helps some people. And, uh, then a couple concepts there, you know, 
We can talk about this stuff all day long. I got to go here for today, but I wanted to test out my new machine. I, uh, the, Adele had a great question. Everyone wants to do this, and you can get this on your template. There are always baby steps, and when you understand that this is a container, it is not your audio. You can't you can't ship a song file like just the song file to somebody and have them uh, be able to to listen to what you've done. Now I have to admit. If I go back to Studio One, but if I ever wanted to, under this song, show media folder, um, when I go up from the media folder right here, I you can take this copy, this whole thing right here, and ship this to somebody because what you need is are you need the song file and its parent and all these together because everything that's in this song is in one of these folders, okay. And there are there are some minor exceptions to that. I shouldn't say everything. But in 95% of the cases, if you set it up the way I've mentioned to you to set it up, they will all be here. Uh, but point being, you have to, this is a this is a family. They all work together. In the media folder, there's these are all your raw files. This is, these are the recordings. This is the little segments here. There's raw two. There's that event. They're all there. And anytime you open a song file, Studio One's running around like crazy behind the scenes and going, all right, I got to find this. And I put them in the right order. And if you hid one, it still knows that it was there. It does all the things behind the scenes, all right? So it, it, it handles all these details. People don't need to know all this stuff. The more you do over time, sometimes you end up learning this stuff because it can help you. Uh, autosave is kicking in for me here because I haven't been saving this. And so there's a bunch of stuff going on. Does anyone need to know about the history folder? Nope, but it's there and it's tracking things and it's keeping itself organized. If you export, you'll have a couple other folders here because if you've done export, you'll probably have a mix down folder or a, uh, what's that, a stems folder. You have that as well. All right, way more than what I was thinking of going out, going uh, over today. And I hope it's helpful, of course. So, all right, Adele, glad that worked for you. And, uh, if you have other questions, post them in the group. If I'm available, I love doing these live things. And of course, as always, well, oh, if I bounce your track, the colors go away. Um, it doesn't really matter, but the colors do go away because bouncing the track, actually, there's actually even a folder in here. Uh, that's a great question. And so I take this track and if you bounce it, yes, because it's actually a new piece of audio and it's now one. By the way, I don't recommend you bounce your raw track. Uh, there's no reason to do it. That's a visual thing. You can undo it. People, if they're new to Studio One, they come from some other software that doesn't do that. They don't like all these segments. It bothers them, but learn to deal with it now. If you want to bounce that, here's what I recommend instead. Duplicate the track complete, take your original reference track, and take this track and bounce it. Do you have to do that? No. You can get it all back, but it sure is easier to do this, and now you have the reference one. But get used to it with the segments. Later, uh, because you'll find someday you're auditing something and you're halfway through an audiobook, and somehow something got slid under something else, you accidentally took off a T for thought, and now you have thaw instead of thought, or something similar to that. And you want to go back and you go, ah, oh, yeah, there it is. There's that T that I took off. And it's still there in the original. Once you've bounced it, it's a whole new segment. If I look behind the scenes in this, and we go song, show media file, and explore. Um, now you see this is the the this is the new track here. And it's gonna be raw too. There that is. And I can see it right there. So, in other words, when you bounce, you actually are behind the scenes creating a new wave file. And that's fine, but some people are, are like bouncing every 10 minutes or two minutes or something, and it's just not needed. And it actually is a negative for a, for a set of reasons. It's mostly a comfort thing that they aren't used to seeing the segments, but nobody can hear these seams anyway. There's no difference in the two sounds. So can you do it? But yes, those will make it one color because now it's not individual uh, events. And remember that it's the event that's colored. Now you have one event. So this one event is one color. Can you do this again? Yeah, you can do it again, but I, there's no reason. Remember that th there are some other software that does require you to bounce first. When you export, it's gonna be put into one thing anyway. So as soon as you go out to RX, it bounces it down to one 
segment anyway, so all your exports do that. You do not need to bounce. Uh, there are reasons that I do. Sometimes visually I will with room tone. There are a couple other reasons. There are reasons to do it, but you don't need to be doing it all the time. I've seen people do it like 40 times in their, in their main track if they're doing 40 minutes. And it's just absolutely not needed. All right. Uh, if you bounce, uh, does it matter? I mean, it doesn't matter. That's totally up to you. If you're happy with it and you want to do it, you may do it. I don't recommend it in most cases, but there are exceptions. <laughs> and in case you're not sure, one size does not fit all. <laughs> I've seen that once or twice. Okay. So uh, a lot of, lot of little things and just depends on what you're doing, but it's not needed. All right. And by the way, if you bounce this track, you'll get some weird things. I don't know what will happen if you bounce this track. I think it just, yeah, becomes one. <laughs> but don't, don't do it on that track. But undo is our friend. And uh, there we go. Now it's unbounced. <laughs> All, right. All right. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.